perspectives on interoperability. This is one aspect we have seen to be paramount in the European e-business arena. And I'm confident that all of you are aware of the situation, you are aware of these standalone applications, where we went to standalone departmental applications, we went to networking computers, where today where we have the internet, networking applications at various levels, computers, and the degree of, of complexity involved requires unprecedented interoperability of systems at all levels. Now, one issue which makes interoperability complex is also what is it? Uh, the definition of interoperability, if you look it up at Wikipedia or somewhere on the internet, you will find probably some 20 or 30. However, probably today, the most prudent approach is to define interoperability as able to collaborate and network at any level. It might be hardware, software, applications, all sorts of technologies. And it's like an elephant. Depending where you grab it, you might have different impressions. If you take it with the nose, you might have a different feeling. So again, interoperability is an issue which is probably not well defined. Everyone is aware of. But at the moment, the notion of how to define and solve it is not very, very well defined. The need for interoperability in enterprise networking is absolutely clear. I mean, I've just put here examples, but this is a typical, probably even an SME running, running systems at this rate of complexity. To make these elements, first, work, upgradable, to really bring synergies, that every, all the elements are in place is a, probably an impossible task, and many of the companies understand how difficult it is to create production environments, to create uh, administrative environments which actually work and actually deliver the value they envisage. And that's in, in, uh, this is a result of a survey among chief information officers in Europe. So obviously the biggest concern is the integration of systems and processes, which again comes back to making those systems and services interoperable in a more easy way. Now this is almost like looking back, because today's situation in interoperability is probably not, not very satisfactorily. However, if we are going to look forward with the new technologies about to, to come and penetrate the market, if we just take the home environment, we will see an unprecedented rate of technologies penetrating our homes. We all have already a number of mobile phones, digital cameras, TVs, computers, stereo, whatever. All of that is standalone right now. However, there are there are developments going on to make these systems interoperable and to have joint value from these interoperable systems. But if you take it outside the home environment, even your personal environment, there's a lot of technology to compensate lack of skills or to extend skills of people, hearing aids, pacemakers, small mobile phones, other technology which helps you in your life and work environment. Very few of those systems are actually seamlessly interoperable. You can extend those, those concepts into, again, the home environment, robotic tools like vacuum cleaners, toys, and, and all elements you might have at home. And you can extend it to an environment where it needs interoperability at the network level, at the service level, and at the content level. Now, again, we, we touch here about the subject which is difficult to grasp. And we have seen a number of European research initiatives already since uh, about 10 years going on in this area. And it's very difficult to focus on what are the clear elements for interoperability. Will you go down the road of standardization? This is one element you can do. Standardization is certainly the most traditional way of, of achieving interoperability. Standardization, specification and softer ways of it. However, there might be more, more clever technologies needed to guarantee and deal in an implicit way with interoperability issues. And I'm taking here a practical example. Uh, if you take the company EADS manufacturing nice aircrafts, now they, they move from a concept stage, definition stage, prototyping, production, maintenance, delivery. These products fly all over the world. There is no exclusion. You will find it from pole to pole wherever you go. The product life cycle of these products is about 50 years from conception to support. So anything which is being designed today will need to be supported in 50 years from now. That's a long time. All the people who have worked today 
on the, the design of those aircrafts will be retired by that time. So you need a lot of knowledge systems, systems which capture all the elements in, in the various stages of producing the aircraft, and you need to make these systems interoperable with today's systems, but also with future systems, because in 50 years from now, what systems will be, will be in place, we don't know. So you see the, the difficulty EADS has, who is running about 250 computer systems while designing an aircraft, in capturing all the knowledge and innovation it has put in this aircraft, and not to arrive to a situation where at the end they have produced a nice aircraft, however, they don't know anything about it anymore. So, this, these issues are very, very paramount today in today's companies, and the success of products and services in the future lies largely on aspects like, are you able to retain the knowledge, exchange the knowledge, and make your systems interoperable that you can take benefit from the knowledge you have? What can we do? The European industry has been working a lot on these various issues, and standardization in, in the vertical industry sectors has been going on. However, Vertical industry sectors today are falling apart quite rapidly. What used to be a chemical industry, a transportation industry, a media industry, is slowly evaporating. This means like companies like EADS are working across all industry. Obviously, there is in-flight entertainment, and they're working a lot with media industry to see what, what could be the future aspects there. So standardization, what used to be on vertical industrial sectors needs to break up into kind of European-wide global standardization mechanism to allow everyone to benefit and to reduce the complexity. Now, from the European Commission side, we had the opportunity with the research to support a number of research activities in this area, and I'm going to show you the, the flagship projects supporting European interoperability research. At the same time, interoperability has been part of the policy activities we have going on. There is an European interoperability framework. And again, it is recognized as part of the I-2010 initiative. Research in uh, enterprise interoperability, and now I'm showing you a couple of, of projects, has been going on in the area of e-business, obviously. Now, two flagship projects have been identified. This is the, on the left side, the red area. There's Interop and Athena, Interop a network of excellence federating European research institutions interested in interoperability issues, Athena federating industry and research on uh, industry and research organizations on interoperability issues, and there are two, uh, two smaller projects, NoREST or Trustcom, who are applying interoperability into various concepts specifically. Now, we have been trying to support European interoperability research in this area. This is going on since a couple of years. And however, we're going to transport this interest also into the future. Interoperability being a requirement today, where we have to catch up issues which probably we haven't been tackling a few years ago, but also at the same time laying the foundation for a future where, like EADS in 50 years from now, we'll have an interoperability framework which actually delivers value. For the future, the European technology platform, NESI, Networked European Software and System Initiative, will be one element where industry in itself will tackle interoperability issues. And anyone interested in this interoperability research and the concept, I invite them to, to look at the technology platform, NESI, and how, how they approach the concept of interoperability, where again, Today's systems must connect to legacy, they must connect to open source environments, they must connect to self-developed software, they must connect to other vendors' applications. And these environments quickly create extremely complex interoperability requirements. And how to break down modules, how to connect them, how to, how to make visible the issue is um, one of the major elements this technology platform is tackling. So finding better and new architecturing methodologies for a more flexible future IT system. NESI is certainly taking in, in, in view from the industry perspective. Most of the exclusive, uh, yeah, all the companies in the technology platform 
uh, are private companies for the moment, and they clearly are looking on how to deliver value to public organizations, to private organizations. I would appreciate to, for you to see what this technology platform could deliver for public services, what this technology platform could deliver for private services, for the research environment. And they are looking clearly at the semantic web, ambient views, what they call ambient views on information, to model better the issues at hand and then to find solutions through this. In uh, this player for, it's like a player, for more interoperability, for better systems, for taking and design stage a few for interoperability, uh, the, the European Commission has recognized this is going to be increasingly relevant to anything we are doing with ICT technologies. Interoperability is not limited to, to software and systems, but it's clearly, clearly part of any sort and form of communication. So it's addressed in various areas of the research program, of the today's research program and the future research program. And clearly in the future, interoperability taken from the enterprise perspective, will be those flagship projects like Athena, like Interop, and also the technology platform Nessie. Thank you very much.